Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about pentamidine. Pentamidine. Okay, let's go. Pentamidine could be pentam as brand name or could be in generic form depending on what is available in your jurisdiction. It belongs to the class of medications known as antifungal and antiprotozoa. It could appear in the form of pentam 300 mg solution to be reconstituted for intramuscular and intravenous injection. Also, it could be generic at 300 mg solution to be reconstituted for intramuscular or intravenous injection. Could also be nebulized by oral. Uses. Pentamidine is pretty useful in handling hemocystic gyrovesi pneumonia in HIV AIDS patients and also in trypanosomiasis known as sweeping sickness treatment. Very useful as prophylaxis against PCP or PJP, that is, pneumocystic carinine pneumonia in the past. That's what we need to be. Now it is pneumocystis gyrovesi pneumonia. In oncology, pentamidine is very helpful as prophylaxis in hematopoietic stem cell transplant recipients. HIV exposed or HIV positive patients will benefit from pentamidine. Administration. No selling containing solution at all. In other words, we cannot use anything containing sodium chloride. Either 0.9% have normal selling or 3% sodium chloride. No, we cannot use that here. When we have chosen the intravenous route, we should please administer that very slowly for almost 90 minutes to two hours. And when we choose intramuscular route, then it should be by deep intramuscular injection. It could be nebulized by oral inhalation using Respirator 2 nebulizer. There is no subcutaneous administration here. In case of extravasation, that will warrant elevation of the arm or forearm that is affected. And of course, we we'll apply warm compress. Adverse reactions. Injection sites could develop pain, swelling, and abscess. A likelihood of renal failure, rashes, hypoglycemia, hallucinations, raised liver enzymes, acute pancreatitis, arrhythmia. Contact lens intolerance. Still on adverse reactions. In individual with asthmatic attack or history of asthma, pentamidine could worsen the situation for them. So it worsens asthma. And there's likelihood of chest tightness. Because of these two side effects or reactions, you can place the patient on bronchodilator before the administration of pentamidine. A likelihood of hepatitis, hypotension, like I've said, if you administer via intravenous route, you administer very slowly. And of course, you watch the vital signs. And even giving it intramuscularly will not exclude the probability of hypotension. Hemoptysis, hearing loss. Still on adverse reactions, there could be night sweats, pruritus, and on physical examination, we could pick spinomegaly. Stimmy Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis could occur here. 
And when the EKG is brought, we could find changes in SC sediment. Low level of magnesium will lead to Tosade point. Tosade point would generate a ventricular arrhythmia. If it is polymorphic ventricular arrhythmia, it could generate to ventricular fibrillation if not corrected on time. And without defibrillation, ventricular fibrillation could progress to asystole. Without the institution of advised cardiac life support with code blue being called, the asystole could lead to the end of life for the affected individual and he or she will end up in a mock. Also, get anomaly is present here, and anyone on pentamidine could have vomiting or nausea. Hepatomegaly has been identified in some. Eosinophilic pneumonitis could also occur, and the list goes on. Contraindications have sensitivity to pentamidine isotonate or any component of the formulation will be a major contraindication. One is hypotension. Hypotension here could be very severe and could actually lead to death. So, when we choose the intravenous route, we must give it very slowly. Remember, you can pause and rewind. I've said it just a few minutes ago that when you give it intravenously, then give it slowly over almost 90 minutes to two hours. Why that? To prevent hypotension. And even choosing intramuscular route will not rule out hypotension. Still part of the warning is we should remember pentamidine could prolong QT. And prolonging QT means we'll be faced with the point. the point could generate to ventricular arrhythmia. And polymorphic ventricular arrhythmia could degenerate to ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation, if not defibrillated, could lead to asystole. Without advanced cardiac life support system instituted on time we could blue being called, the individual could end up in a morgue. Also, Stephen Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis could actually lead to death if not appropriately addressed. Arrhythmia. Hypertension, like I've explained in the last now few minutes. Hypertension. In diabetes mellitus, the individual could be faced with either hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. Still on warnings, you could be faced with pancytopenia when the bone marrow is suppressed. And we should be cautious in the face of hepatic or renal impairment. Please, don't use pentamidine with other medications that can prolong QT or any medication that has nephrotoxicity as a side effect. Monitoring. We should be checking liver function tests, renal function tests, glucose, complete blood count, and platelets. Blood pressure, EKG, potassium level, and calcium. Drug-drug interaction. Since I will not be able to predict precisely what medications the patient will be on before being placed on pentamidine, or those ones that will be prescribed concomitantly at the same time with pentamidine, I will then leave this session to the discretion of the prescribing physician and the pharmacist in that jurisdiction or the clinical pharmacologist because the list is pretty long. Examples of where we can use pentamidine and hemocystic reversing pneumonia treatment. And in that case, you can give 4 mg per kilogram intravenously once daily for 21 days. 
or you may choose 3 mg per kilogram intravenously once daily for 21 days. Intravenosomyces, that is super sickness, which is very common in West African zone of the world. You can give 4 mg per kilogram intravenously or intramuscularly once daily for 7 to 10 days. In HIV exposed or HIV positive individuals, you can give 4 mg or 3 mg per kilogram intravenously once daily for 21 days. In oncology, Pentamidine is pretty really useful in hematopoietic stem cell transplant recipients. And you can give 4 mg or 3 mg per kilogram intravenously every two weeks or every four weeks. In pediatric age group, particularly infants and children, you can give Pentamidine at 4 mg per kilogram intravenously once daily. You can change to pyora inhalation via nebulizer after 10 days if there is improvement. In pregnancy, Pentamidine belongs to category C in pregnancy, which means you are going to weigh the merit and the merits. And then you have to monitor the pregnant woman. So it is not completely contraindicated in pregnancy, but you have to be very careful, you have to watch. Okay, with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Please remember to subscribe, remember to share, and you can leave comments for me on my channel. I appreciate it.